Welcome to Retraction. I'm your co-host, Antoine. I'm your co-host, Jamie. And if you like reversing course through discourse with us, I say subscribe. Antoine says like. like. Do us a favor and do both. Watch. Watch. Love us. I wish there was a love button. Is Isn't that, there? Is that too weird? Is it, there isn't? I mean, or not that hearts, a favorite because that's like very TikTok-y. But uh, I do I wish there was like a like we love this like the, the Netflix they have added the double thumbs up so it's not just a thumb up you could do a double thumb. Well, there's no end. There's no end to that. You could no, just keep multiplying. A, double thumbs. Yeah. Double thumbs. Jamie, what do you what do you got? What's what's happening? All right. So Antoine, we have we had I should say a wolf update a few episodes ago regarding the Minnesota House voting to ban wolf hunts. Okay, we have a development in this story. So if you would be so kind, sir, as to do the intro. We have a woo update. There you have it. It's official. So the Minnesota House of Representatives has voted to ban recreational wolf hunting if wolves are ever removed from the federal endangered species protection list. So that is pretty freaking awesome. Um, the last time wolves were hunted in Minnesota from 2012 to 2014, uh, after they were removed from the endangered species list in the Great Lakes region, more than 900 were killed for fun. No more if this keeps going down this way. So uh, the, it, it passed the House, still needs to go through the Senate. Okay. But um, Minnesota state Republic. Senate. State Senate, we're talking about. State people. Senate. State, state Senate. Senate. It passed the state house. Yeah. You know, those, those really, Senate. the really crazy people. The people think, people think that the Congress, that we have the federal, that the, the crazy people are up there. It's all majority Taylor Greens in state, in the, uh, in, in these state houses. So, uh, yeah. Good, good, good on them, though. Good, good on some stability out of the good old state of Minnesota. They're not done yet. Minnesota. Um, is, is that the accent? <laughs> For anyone out there who's from the I mean, is that where Bobby's World was? Is it Bobby's World, Minnesota? I, I do not Was that remember. Wisconsin? I, I can't remember. Do you remember Bobby's World? It was a cartoon? Very, 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 very fleetingly. You know me. I It, it takes me a lot. It takes me a while to uh, to remember these things, to jock the old noggin. But, well, to uh, be fair, yeah. I want I want to represent the other side here. Minnesota Republicans, whether you want to believe it or not, say that this ban endangers citizens and their pets and livestock and game animals and everything you ever loved. I, I'm sure they do. I'm sure they do. Let's cut to the evidence. Well, you know me. <laughs> yeah, the yeah. Minnesota Department of Natural Resources has repeated for the millionth time that wolves are not dangerous to people. Okay. And they cool. back it up. There has only been one documented instance of a wolf attacking a person in Minnesota, and that was 10 years ago. Okay. Okay. So, so every ten years, one Minnesotan loses their lives to wolves. I I don't even because this says in its like history. So it happened oh. ten years ago, but I don't think it ever happened before then. At least it wasn't documented. So whenever they started documenting okay. this stuff, which I imagine I'm gonna throw out fifty years, call me a liar. No, probably, it's probably. probably been going yeah, on usually most things start. You know, yeah, yeah, definitely started maybe, maybe 70, 50, 50 years ago. Here's the thing. Let me let me play devil's advocate. Let me play devil's advocate. We know that there aren't. Um, there's no real documented evidence that wolves target people um, or their pets. That being said, they're also usually close to extinction. If they were to come back in, I don't know, droves, uh, what do you call a hundred wolves? Is there, is there a special name for that? It, it's a pack when they're to, you know, living together and loving one another. But it, it, if there's like 300, 400 wolves roaming the pack. countryside. I'm going to say I'm going to say a super pack. I actually think that's Ooh, what, I like what that. it might that's be called. Really, I, I wish I hope it is called a super pack. A super pack of wolves roaming the countryside. Is that now like that's the thing it, with the increase of wolves? But do you, we think but that, that could be a problem? So that is an interesting question to ask. Now, I am not. um an animal expert. You're not but, a wolf expert. But the way that I understand how nature works, humans aside, is that there is a natural balance within ecosystems. And so wolves and other animals, unless they're invasive, which wolves are not, right. will only grow to a size that is sustainable because they need food to eat. Okay. And so if they don't have enough land and prey, and I'm sorry, they're not just going to get into livestock, which is going to support a super pack. Right. Like that's not how 
I, I, I just don't think that that's no, that's a really good answer. Feasible, practical. I, th- I think that's but a really good if, answer. If you don't have yeah. enough land and and natural prey for them to feed off of and grow in a consistent, reliable, sustainable way, then no, I don't think that you're going to get these roaming nomadic super packs that are just sweeping across the land like locusts okay. because like locusts it's not sustainable they lose their food source very quickly and die off i did not know that i did not know that is that is that true in the in a plague of locusts it is fleeting well they keep going they keep flying from place to place and they keep depleting their system until i guess their life cycle ends okay 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 you all well, you heard it here but, first uh, listeners you heard it here first the roaming pack of wolves, the super pack. Once they're done with Minnesota, they'll be coming for your door. That, that's what you said. Basically, it's nine thousand wolves you, descending you, on New York your City. Pets, yes, you. Okay. And, and yeah, they're coming coast to coast. Right, they're because like, they you, gotta move on. Their pets, right, and your livestock and your game animals. Everything right. you've ever known and loved right. will disappear. It will perish. It will perish yes. to the to the carnivorous ever so vivacious wolf ain't no mountain high enough to keep these wolves it. away i love it but in all seriousness i'm really excited that's a bright note of legislation that i hope is good legislation i hope that it carries through and the minnesotan people don't regret it despite the fear mongering from the other side that the wolves are coming for their loved ones well the majority of minnesotans support this that's even better. Um, the bill well, that's was, had bipartisan that's the support. That's the bill awesome. had bi- bipartisan support. So okay. regardless of some of the talking points Republicans as a party put out, yeah. some Republicans did vote for it in the House. Like I said, it's it's being negotiated in the Senate now. So if you're listening or you know someone, if you are if you live in Minnesota and you're listening or you know someone, you know, I know it's probably not at the top of your priority list, but this is another living being and your ecosystem does help control your ecology and you should uh reach out to your congressman reach out to your senators specifically and show your support i love it love it if you don't know yourself now you know there you go folks no excuses update all right moving on lightning right right we're gonna keep this wagon train a moving i've seen toy story too many times um that you have (laughs) all right so Last time we spoke about child labor abuses, we covered a story focusing on Arkansas. And in that, speaking of a Toy Story, what's that? I'm just, I don't know. It doesn't really go. It's it's uh, the truth. I I, I was trying uh, to connect it. I I got it. Uh, Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. (laughs) Okay. All right. (laughs) Children. Well, (laughs) back to the children in the minds. Let's let's children toys abuse. Yeah. yeah, I was was trying to get there. (laughs) All right. So. In that episode, when we <laughs> covered child abuse in form of child labor right. um, in Arkansas, we zeroed in on kids working overnight shift in factories. But you rightly cited agriculture as an, yes. an er- as an area of concern as well. We didn't really get into it then, but since then, I think about a week or so ago, mm-hmm. um, an NPR came out with an article, and it covered some disturbing news out of North Carolina. And I remember I was reading it as I was eating my breakfast. I kind of lost my appetite. <clears throat> So basically, 12-year-olds, right? This is kind of where the child labor abuses start. There are instances of it happening younger, but 12 is kind of where they're allowed to. This is legal, right? And so 12-year-olds can't buy cigarettes. They can't work in grocery stores. They can't work in fast food chains, but they can work in tobacco fields. Yes. And this isn't an endorsement that they should start smoking or do any of those other things. In fact, it's an acknowledgement that contact with tobacco is dangerous. Yeah. So you all know the smoking effects. If you haven't, I don't know, pick your pick your head out of the sand. But when you're handling the plants themselves, nicotine can seep into your skin. Yeah. And these children, which I'm going to keep saying because I want everyone to feel uncomfortable, these children develop nicotine poisoning, which has a whole host of symptoms. Agriculture's hazardous occupation orders haven't been updated in 50 years, which is a joke that we kind of made wow. uh, last time when we talked about the compensation that you had for children being hurt in these factories. Yeah. It was so menial. What was it like a couple grand or something like that? And we were like, wow, those, I think you're the one that said it. Like, those probably haven't been updated since they were written. Well, similarly, this agriculture hazardous occupation orders haven't been updated probably since they were written. Wow. And 
They haven't been updated in 50 years, and they don't include tobacco, despite the known risks for workers of all ages. So aside from the sickness, yeah. kids are being injured, kids are being killed. Okay? So I'm going to set the stage here for those of you who may be like, hey, uh, it's a meadow. It's a sound of music. What's so What's so wrong about me and working in the field, right? That is not what a tobacco field is like, by the way. Of what yeah, you know. I know. Yeah. I was, I was just saying, I, I don't even want to start there because here's the thing. Most people do not know what field work looks like. And the only reason I know about this is because the Atlantic, maybe like 10 years ago, it was a long time ago, they did a piece on children working in tobacco fields. So this is one of the older issues when it comes to children working in uh, in, in, in places. Well, basically, well, children should not be working. They, they should be out playing video games. They should be out learning, playing. Well, uh, yeah. Uh, work and children should never go hand in hand. There, there, there should be something that we should be doing about that. There shouldn't be an area in which children are helping support the the homestead. It's not 1862. It's not 1733. It's not 1600. We don't have children anymore in order to support us. We don't have children to work our farms so that we can, I don't know, retire and 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 uh, and not have to uh, pay. I don't know some some price for something you you know what i'm saying you know it's, what i'm saying people children you know what's How you know what's that? sad is that you're you're telling me that the atlantic did a compelling piece a decade ago and things have only gotten worse uh, yeah, well I, I mean that that is that's that's worse yeah I mean, that that is really sad actually but anyway um i was so, gonna say that working in a tobacco field the tobacco itself is actually really sticky as well so not only is it poisonous uh it's it's really sticky to work with so imagine i don't great. know picking a fruit that is sticky i just imagine uh chevy chase in um christmas vacation after he works with the sap on the tree and he's trying to read the magazine and he keeps it's reading like the pages every time he turns except chevy is 12 <laughs> yeah and that's his there's one comic book that he gets that year and um he just yeah. destroyed it yeah, yeah. um go. so picture this folks it's summertime 100 degrees in the sun and you will find 12-year-olds working the fields in North Carolina, right? And now, for some reason, the agriculture industry has some of the most lax child labor laws of any other industry. I'm going to set the stage here with a couple bullet points. 12-year-old children wake up at 4 a.m. every day to work the fields. 4 a.m. 4 a.m. They go home dehydrated and exhausted and do it all over again, day after day after day. They are 12. They can work unlimited hours. I mean, that should just be it. They can work unlimited hours as long as it's outside of school hours, which means they aren't really learning much, are they? If they're getting up at 4 a.m., working unlimited, and that's really at their discretion and at their employer's discretion. Um, and then they're going home dehydrated, exhausted. And what are they learning? They're probably sleeping in school. I mean, most of us of sleep in school and we get a good night's sleep. Yeah. Can't imagine what these kids are doing. You, you right? can't. You can't. You can't. You so wake up at What's the priority the here? What is the and, priority yeah, here? Start school at like, what, 730, 8 a.m. So that you're working for four hours in the field, showing up to school all sticky. Try to get into a desk, pick up a pencil, stick it to your hands, pick up your your notebook, still sticky. I mean, this is awful. I'm just saying, I, I want everyone to understand how annoying it must be to be sticky all the time. Not only that, but you're being poisoned and sticky. I just think that that's something the listener needs to really let seep into their skin. Literally. It bothers that's me. It. Yeah, it should, it, it should because you're you're supposed to go to school. This is the time when you're supposed to learn to set yourself yeah. up for success later on. Absolutely. Right, this should be the priority of our nation. Yeah, like a right? preteen. I mean, so these kids so impressionable. There's so many psychological things that are definitely going to be injurious to you having to work. And these you and and, and you hours. you talk about the, the 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 Republicans will talk about picking yourself up by your bootstraps. How are you supposed to do that if you can't be educated because you're dehydrated, you're exhausted? Your, your, I, mean, your, I would your, ask how many your, legislators your have to wake up. You are literally poisoned. Well, you yeah, are there's, being there's poisoned that. daily. There's that. We're but sending also, these people poison. Right. Well, I just want to say, how many of these legislators actually had to get up at 4 a.m. To, to work a job before they became a legislator? That's a good question, too. I That's the question I would ask if I was sitting in 
any and you know the Congress, regardless, you know, whichever chamber. I would just say, how many of us have had to get up at four in the morning? How do we know what this is like? How do we know this is good for anyone, considering the fact that we've never had to do this in our lives, in our lifetime? It's just, it's unrelatable. It's it, unrelatable, it which is it's, probably why no it's easy to anyone, ignore. Yeah. It's probably easy to ignore, which is why I keep repeating children, kid, 12-year-old, because I think that is the only hook here. I think that is the only resonant tone that people cannot ignore, is if you have kids, if you, if you have kids in your family or friends or whatever... Just picture them being poisoned every day, waking up at 4 a.m. as long as it's outside of school hours, not learning a damn thing in school, and they're just doing it day after day. I, it's it's unconscionable. Like it's just it's terrible. It's, and and to boot, to boot, all of this, these kids are sticking it out, doing what they think is right by their family or their situation. These 12-year-old children often get stiffed for their work. They have to sometimes fight to get paid. It's not even guaranteed. Wow. If the documents or the bundles that they've collected get lost, that's it. So oh, because you know, that twelve year olds are really good at um documentation, yeah. especially yeah, uh, yeah. The strenuous just... working environment where you're sticky. Yeah. So efforts to change child labor laws in agriculture have repeatedly failed due to Republicans and farm lobbying opposition and leave growers and companies left to decide what is best for 12-year-old children. The Republicans' argument, which mm -hmm. is infuriating at best, mm -hmm. is that changes to child labor laws would hurt family farms and, get this, and make it harder to teach kids about farming. That is the crux of their argument. That this is an educational lesson. This is this is yeah, all education. Yeah. So this is part of yeah. the education. Waking up, no. working this the isn't, tobacco farm. This isn't fourth period. This is their freaking life. That that that's amazing. I mean, that's that's rich. That's rich. And isn't you it? keep saying Republicans. Is it, is it really? It's is it the, is it black and white? Is it the only people supporting this? Uh the right on uh, the more conservative avenue of uh of our uh, great uh, political. I think system? when it comes, I think when it comes to the votes. And you're going to look at in the yeah. aggregate. Yes. Now, okay. are there a few factors on sides? I, you know, who knows? Um, I didn't look through all the voting records for every bill that's ever been proposed. But I think on the whole, yeah, it's it's, it's a party thing. And 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 being a party thing, is it because they control the majority? Is it because the Republicans are the majority in many of the tobacco growing states? Why this persists? Because I mean that that's the thing. It, well, they're donors. If it is, and 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 we're, we're, again, going back to the right other thing, stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they're donors, but we're going back to what we've talked about before. Mm -hmm. These are migrant workers. These are not the locals. You know, not yeah. the people who have been I here imagine. for generations. Like, just to be clear, yeah. Like, this is preying on people who have no say, who have no voice in this system. They have no support system, except right. for some activists or civil rights groups. Yeah. Thankfully, they exist. But I'm um, saying, if if is it because again, is it? If the blue side, the left, are so up in arms about this practice, and yet it continues, is this to say that there has never been a blue majority in any of the areas where this happens to go down? It's a fair question. I do not know. So that's what I'm saying. Like, is it always red, 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 red majority? Always, oh, you know, for the past 20, 30, 50 years, it's always red, red, red. That's why no. I mean, is North Carolina a purple state? I mean, I it's supposed that, to be. It's supposed to be it, now. Well, now, I mean, I don't know. This is, I, I mean, this isn't a future article. Um, so this is the this is what's happened. You know, yeah, time to date. Yeah, uh, well, I'm just so, saying. I mean, I like to. The reason I push on this, and a lot of counties. I mean, do local counties flip often? Like local, like uh, it depends on gerrymandering, like towns and counties. Yeah, it depends and on how it's like been that. redistricted and things of that nature. But if you're you're saying it's always a local county, because I mean, again, this is the state. They could they they have like state level, you know, laws that they could pass that would just raise the minimum age of what you of, you know what you could be to yeah work but you know i mean uh, that happens on every level though just because you have a majority doesn't mean you get to push through what you want I, and it's not i wish it was like that uh yeah, i don't just, it, it's I, corrupt it's absolutely corrupt you're right okay. i'm sure but, democrats can be blamed for not seizing opportunity for not um 
looking at the long term and saying, keep your short term bribe and, yeah. and, and whatever pork you were going to put in this bill for me, I reject it because I know that you're trying to stifle something that could have a lasting impact on a minority community. I'm sure that they could do better. But I think that while there is some blame and, and you can hold the other parties, and I'm going to assume there are other parties at play, not mm-hmm. just the two, mm-hmm. accountable, mm-hmm. I think the bulk of it does sit with the Republicans. And okay. I think that holding them to a different standard than you would others for their moments in time where they could have shined versus the 99% of the other time that gotcha. existed. Gotcha. You know what I mean? Like, I totally get you. And I think that's part of the problem, too, well, I mean, is that a- you have the Republicans acting a certain way. And then I'm, you know, I, I'll blame Democrats for stuff. I don't care for any of the parties. Yeah, yeah. But it's not the same when they have like four months, six months, one year to pass a host of legislation to yeah. make up for all the time lost and, and, and damage done by the opposing gotcha. party who believes in draconian things. I like that. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I, mean, I blame them for stuff, but it's like I can't give yeah. them I, they cannot shoulder the same amount of blame. There's blame. Right. But it would be it would be doing a disservice to what the Republicans have done, I think, in this case. You're, you're basically saying the aggressor. I'm going to blame the aggressor here, even if there is a passive element in our governmental system that allows this to continue. Because, I mean, basically, that, that's what I'm getting at, is that when the the dem- po- if it's a Republican state, the Democrats probably win by being a little Republican. Right. You have that in West Virginia. Yeah. Well, the, well, there's that. I'm just trying. Even, I'm, I mean, we could go all the way up to the federal. You're like, why is there a federal law that prohibits? how old you can work when you're on a farm. Why is this up to the states? We've had democratic um, administrations for some time now, uh, off and on uh, in between Republican ones. Why isn't it and, law? And, the, and either way, it's never been the, the cornerstone of any democratic running or a democratic initiative. You know, when Obama first won, uh, he, he, the, he, you know, I'm just saying these are people who are more in the game because he was in the Senate. They, they know what's going on in other states. They're more, yeah, you know, they're 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 more fleshed, for lack of better phrasing, than the re- than the majority of us who have to go to our lives, you know, doing every other thing that we happen to do in our in our day to day. These guys live legislation, so they know that these are issues. They know that these things are going on, and yet they don't make them a priority when they are in power. And you're right; there could be a myriad of issues that would stonewall a Democrat from actually putting a stop to this. Fine, but they definitely don't make an big enough to stink about it that it, it happens to be the the thing we know they ran on like no one's like oh man remember when hillary was running and she lost to trump man was that awful because her whole thing was all about getting these kids out of tobacco fields and and america was like no we don't care about that you know it's it's never the at the forefront of a presidential election to be like hey why, why are children still working tobacco fields and have been doing so for the past 30 40 years like why, why is that a thing why are we still doing I mean, that you when know we that's never a thing when we push the stuff on Twitter, right, we, we promote the episodes and we've done stuff from Arkansas and some other states yeah. that have been uh, engaging in this type of, of behavior with children. Yeah. Um, there, there are so many people that are defending it, saying it's up to the parents to decide. They need to, you know, the, the, and they come up with reasons as to why this is OK. And no one's forcing the kids to do this. It's it's not slavery, um, I mean, they have all these ways of <laughs> except kids don't have listen. rights. I mean, your parents, you, you, that's so it's that's so duplicitous. It's because they know children don't have the, rights. Children do not have rights to anyone to say it's up to the first of all to say it's up to the parents is is acknowledging that children don't have the rights. They don't have the right to say no, mommy, uh, the, no, the daddy. Are not I don't want to work in this field this morning. I'd rather sleep in like a normal person should be allowed to at that age. Uh, that's crazy. That's crazy to to, to 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 do that, to do that game. But that's the game everyone that's the game you gotta play when you know you're on the wrong side of history. You have to play games. You have to have great gamesmanship when you know you're on the wrong side of history. When you know what you're advocating for is so abhorrent, so ridiculous that to just say it plainly, most people would say, Yeah, no, we're not voting for that. Yeah, no, we're not supporting that. You have to play ridiculous political games in order to abscond the realities of the issue you you have to right you have to you have to obfuscate the issues at hand in order to allow it to proliferate for decades which is what this happened here that's basically what we're talking about proliferation of children working sticky poisonous tobacco fields for decades or something that's poisoning us all anyway 
So and, yeah, let me ask and, and for something that you can't even use <laughs> in most indoors anymore, you, you cannot smoke indoors. You can't smoke within like 15 feet of most public places. Most campus school campuses are just smoke free. So you can't smoke anywhere on the even if you're outdoors at 15 feet from a building, you can't smoke on the campus. So there are children who are dying for something that majority of us have said we don't want in our lives. We don't want it anywhere near us. We don't want it near our children. That's why they're smoke free schools. That's why they're smoke free campuses, smoke free that's why the bus driver doesn't smoke anymore. We don't want it around our children, but some other plane, people, yeah, some other people's children can go pick it to go sell it abroad because that's used that like, that must be what it's being used for. It's the it's the it's the sale of uh, of the tobacco products in Asia and, and and elsewhere that have more lax rules on tobacco use than we do here in America. Strict so, rules, but lax child labor laws. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so let me ask you this question. All right. Sure. Today. Because I, I I want to understand the challenge more. So today, if a family is struggling, kids are gonna work, whether it's legal or not. That's just a fact of today. Not what mm -hmm. we want, but today. Yeah. Families are poor, they don't have money, they cannot eat, they will put their kids to work, they will find that work not everybody but sure maybe some people it's it, it exists it's happening it's happening it's in happening. the field Fine. it's happening it, it happens okay Fine. so it's happening it's happening enough to fuel an industry many industries that's why we have these issues right now right so how do we either help that family so that the 12 year old doesn't have to work or is this a situation where we make that work experience as humane and as safe as possible. Is it age restrictions, a better immigration system, safer conditions, more protections, better hazardous restrictions? What is it? Like, do you simply just outlaw it? And then you're like, okay, family, you're going to starve now because you don't have enough income. Like, you can't, like, I don't want to say you can't do that. So you have to let the kids work. Like, what are the alternatives to this? Well, I mean, I think that it's not binary. It, if you stop the children from working, it means that those profitable companies those companies that want to make profit will find labor and that labor will then be adult labor because you're no longer allowed them to pay children and if because they're paying adults they will have a less like they will be less likely to probably stiff them or to you know mess with their wages or their time or anything because they're not dealing with children anymore they're dealing with full grown adults that's that's one so you could just do that so to say oh but we're cutting money out of the pockets of people who rely on their children for work it's like well maybe the wages will go up instead of being depressed because you don't have pay 12 their parents year olds taking some of these jobs You're saying pay their parents more well i'm just saying maybe that's naturally what happened if the companies could no longer rely on cheap child labor because guess what that is what happened in the late 19th century when we outlawed this stuff back then because guess who got factory jobs after World War II? And guess where the pensions came from? And uh, white picket fences and moving to the suburbs. Guess where all that stuff started? When we started outlawing companies, monopolies from abusing people and forcing them to treat them like, 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 well, I don't know, humane. Standard, of, la standard of, of living went up. It didn't go down for across the board. So anyone who argues that doesn't know their history. Standard of living went up because we forced the money that people were working to actually go into their pockets and not into just a couple of people far removed from the production line. That that that's what I have to say about that. So it could be that you could start there. That's okay. One. Okay. That's no, one. I mean, it's that's a start, and, and we don't have the answers, but it's a question that everyone needs to start asking themselves and others who defend this. Because well, there's other. It, yeah, I, I have another thing that we could do. <laughs> We could also pay people for having children. You you could say instead of putting your children to work, we'll just pay you for the child that one day will contribute to our society. Because guess what? Some other countries do that very same thing. Only in America is it has it been um, stigmatized for, well, if people take advantage of the system, they'll just have 22 children so that they can get all this money. Well, they, they could do that. They could do that. Most people won't. <laughs> they, just most people won't and by supporting these children you are reinvesting into our country because they are now instead of feeling um disenfranchised 
they will, you know, they 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 will be more likely to become doctors, become lawyers, fill out some of these positions that we may not have. Uh, you know, a, a great many of people waiting to take those those places. You know, I, I feel like we have job shortages in, in various industries. You know, we reinvest in our youth by paying people who have children, so that way they their children get better educations and don't end up, you know, working tobacco fields, getting poisoned. And then uh, I don't know what kind of because they don't have an education. I don't know what kind of job they'll get once they've aged out of working in tobacco fields. Now, a 22 year old with no education because they've been working tobacco fields as a child no longer can work tobacco fields because they want cheap child labor, not cheap adult labor. This person has no skills, no education. What are they left to do in this world? That's a question we need to ask ourselves. So if the alternative is to pay them, which is in my opinion, a reinvestment in our own society, I think that's a much better case scenario than to say, no, they don't deserve money because they're stealing from us. It's like, okay, fine. Now they're 22. They're uneducated. They're still living here. No skills, no job prospects, no future. What do they do? What's left? What do they expect? What do you expect them to do? What do you, what do you want them to do? Because they don't, they can't work for you. They have no skills. What do you want them to do? That's the question I would ask. It's a fair question. It's a fair question. That's why that's my and, number two. All right. So those are two decent answers <laughs> to to a very I mean it's a very heavy question. It, it's the livelihood of people today. How do you protect their underage workers that you're that they're putting to work to draw an income while still not starve the family? I understand the the situation that these people are in but i ask you this yeah right this is a danger to our society treating our own people this way whether they're citizens or not absolutely this is not this is not what we stand for yeah and so when you think about something like cigarettes and the surgeon general warning and the graphics that they put on there and the text they put on there to warn abroad, you abroad we don't do that we don't do that here right I mean, they certainly put you can't, you shouldn't smoke this if you're pregnant yeah, or they whatever don't put, have like, you. They don't put like the open throat, like cancerous throats, and like um, that kind of imagery in American cigarettes. I, I don't think, think I, maybe not that, like that here, maybe not that here, but they yeah. they put stuff even with other they put hazardous stuff. materials. They put they put hazard stuff, but it's not the hazard stuff. symbol symbology and yeah, yeah. Uh, all that stuff. But I guess my point here is, if that is on there, then whether it's meat or cigarettes or what have you kind of different agricultural products should should we have a label on there that says child labor used would you eat that would you buy that would you smoke that if you knew subversive children put that on your plate it's a subversive it's a subversive angle i i i, I applaud you i i think that's quite is that in the article at all or that's what that's no, your you're coming up with I, I, I like it i there are ways to combat without going you know Head headlong into the fray. I, I kind of like it. That that's kind of cool. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if it'll have the intended effect. I don't know how long that would take. It might take a, quite some time. But well, it's competition, right? It's almost like now, as 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 yeah. as bad as this is, because it's a bad example because the uh, um, certifications are so corrupt. Because they're That's in the exactly middle of the ocean was... and you cannot and you cannot inspect that is different than inspecting in a field. But when you have things like dolphin safe tuna or something like that, right? Yeah. Like that's not really enforceable when you start digging into it. So that label in itself, while it makes you feel good and you will pick the product with it versus a, the one next to it that might not have it. Yeah. Um, you really don't know what you're getting. Yeah. But this is different. This is very much on land. You can very much now people could get paid off and bought maybe. But if this is more of a government initiative. There, Unfortunately, then corporations you, are really good at cir circumventing that kind of legislation. I think it's very clever and I think it's good. I, I could just see everyone basically starts going through a third party so that they hit, get hit with the label. And then because they then move on the goods, it gets white. Well, I'm thinking less dolphin free because that is a third party and that is a yeah. corrupt station and more like yeah. energy star, which is very much government and very okay. much you need to abide. OK, so it would have to be I a like government. That certification where they are going out there they're not going to be bribed hopefully i mean yeah. humans are humans but mm -hmm. i think it would have a better shot and if you did if you saw a bunch of whatever your product here is and this product here and one's like <laughs> child labor used 
I mean, I mean, part of me is also thinking about the addictive nature of cigarettes. I'm trying to think if you if you've got all these other warnings that say please don't smoke cigarettes, and then you add one more label that says child labor used. <laughs> I don't. I wonder. I I mean, it's. Uh, I feel like can't I do it for yourself. A, do it for the kids. I, I I wish we had a smoker on to be like, is, would that matter? Uh, but uh, yeah, let's see. I mean, yeah, it would be it would be cool. I I think that that's the that's the kind of creative thinking that is needed in order to upend a lot of this draconianism. Is uh, it, you you need to be subversive, and that's that's very subversive. I like it. I like it. It's worth a shot. What 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 do you have to lose? Because the kids are going to be working this field. If you don't do the labels, the kids are working the fields. If you do do the labels and the kids are working the fields, at least we have a foothold. Now we've got something to point to. You you have something you could bring. I could shake a cigarette pack so you, the listeners could hear on the pod, being like, "This is a cigarette pack that's made with children." You know, it's like to shake it vigorously into the microphone. You know, at least there's stuff like that. You, we could we could start to to Looney Tune about uh in in this crusade but yeah we gotta do something you gotta start somewhere and right now we we're nowhere we're just reports people just bringing it up every so often well that there you have it what do you want to do we've run through the gauntlet well there was a third you want to do a third yeah we gotta we we we, we got some time let's do this let's, right. hit, let's hit the people up with the third i think i feel like the all people, right they're, they're, they're waiting they're, they're waiting they're amped they're, 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 they're they all just right. want to know third third drop the hammer here's the third folks our country has issues newsflash but they're not new (laughs) right they're not new the the problems we face are not necessarily new many are getting more light than we've gotten before Mm -hmm. and it's past time we face them accordingly uh so our issues span the spectrum i'm not going to go through all of them this isn't that type of pod Mm -hmm. but we have racism and oppression as seen recently in oklahoma where the FBI is investigating GOP officials caught on tape talking about lynching black people and murdering newspaper reporters. Um, The transcripts and audio is pretty graphic. I'm not even going to, I'm not even going to do it a favor and read it or play it on here. Um, So if you're interested, you could check out a link in the pod description. Um, Unless you feel differently, Antoine, but it's no, 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 we don't need to air it out because you, you, I mean, I, I I got the picture. Go right. We've seen this. We've, we've seen this story before. So, I mean, it's appalling when you see that these people are the ones in charge, tasked with protecting the community, and this is where they're going. Um, it's it, it, it's it's a sad day in Oklahoma. Um, and then what I say? Have- Did I say state state legislatures? Did I say they got, got nothing. nothing? Federal the federal people people gaff and guffaw on on the, the 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 antics of people in the in the Senate and House. But man, you go state and you you that that will yeah. That was so, something. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was, there were just too many crude things. I, I was like, I, I don't have anything that's that's not crude right now. So there you go. It's fine. It's fine. So well, what I am going to focus on for a moment is Tennessee. It's Tennessee, right? You may have heard of Tennessee. Did we lately. just talk about Tennessee? Didn't we just? This is the shooting, them? right? The shooting, no, right? Oh, not the book bans too. The book ban. They might have had. Book, I mean, God. They oh, that was Texas. Uh, okay, this Texas, fine. Texas, and Florida were covered last time, but we've been covering okay. a few state issues. But this time. Another shooting in Tennessee, and I'm sure there's plenty of shootings in the country, but this yeah. one stuck out. Okay. A pregnant woman was shot by a Walgreens employee in Nashville, Tennessee. Okay. Wow. So the police said a Walgreens employee was notified by another employee that two women were stealing items from the store. They were shoplifting. Okay. Right. So the employee said, as the woman began putting items in the trunk of her car, he made his way to the back of the car. That's when the woman reportedly pulled out a can of mace. And began to spray him after he confronted her. And don't know if there was any physical okay. altercation at that point. Okay. This is when the employee pulled out a semi-automatic pistol and began shooting the woman, uh, the women, both of them, one of whom was seven months pregnant. So visibly pregnant Damn. at that point. Right. So I'm not going to go into any more detail. Uh, as last I heard. Uh, baby seemed fine, but in, 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 in intensive care and the women were in critical condition. But this goes back to what we've said before, that what's the point of courts if you're allowed to pass judgment on the streets and bypass due process? All right, Why yeah, weren't the police called? Why that's, was that's this guy I should have done? Yeah. And naval. Why was he empowered one to carry a semi-automatic pistol, yeah. but 
to, and even if it's kept in the store, which I don't know how things work in Tennessee, but to leave the store with it in pursuit of a shoplifter, yeah, as if that's a proportionate response to that, and then to actually approach her and then fire on her, even if you get sprayed in the face with mace, to then dole out I, it's deadly but, force. Yeah, that's insane. It's insane that to say that this your action is is executable. Like I can execute you now because you've harmed me. You, you harmed me, so I can put a bullet in you. It's that's so insane that only in this country will people stand up and say, oh, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. This is the only place everyone else would say that is so freaking crazy. That is a disproportionate response. First of all, what kind of raise do you think was this Walmart? What is it? Walgreens? Walgreens. Walgreens. What, 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 what is, it, what is the this? max? What is the merchandise capping out there? Like $20? It could be around fifty she take- because they 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 sell the uh the shavers you know like the, okay. the head shavers and then yeah. they the, the Norelco got, right and yeah. then they've got the um the humidifiers and, the, and those those could be quite expensive oh and sometimes if they go with the fans uh you know like oh, the, oh. I'm just saying it could it could it could top out around fifty your 60 life bucks. worth two hundred bucks what's your life worth well it, it's apparently it's only worth uh it's under fifty I mean it's basically a dollar store I mean your your drugstore is basically a dollar store I mean so. wow so. You ha- and she's seven months pregnant. I mean, that didn't give you pause to be like, "Hey, maybe I'm not going to shoot this woman and her baby." I just feel like but- it's cowardly. You know that that's that's why I don't like that. This is my issue with the guns in, in in this country in general. Um, you know, and I don't. I mean, you you, you get a lot of you get a lot of people being like, "How cowardly is it if my my gun is in your mouth?" I mean, I, it, it's cowardly to me to pull out a weapon. On people who don't have weapons and start firing on them. I don't understand how you think that's brave or you're standing up for yourself to, to do that. I just think that it's just, it's, it's just, I, I can't get beyond that. I and, think, and, I well, think it's cowardly. I think that's and a cowardly I think about, move. And I think about this person, right? This person who shot the Walgreens employee. I don't know who this person was. I don't know what state of mind they're in. I do blame him for his action. But then again, I almost like find it hard to blame him because he's allowed to do it. He is. Like, he he's is. allowed the state to is, do it. Yeah, the state enabled him to want to shoot people. Here's the thing. If you carry your gun in public, you're basically saying, I am willing to use it. Okay. I find issue with that in general. I find issue with that means that you want to use it. In, in in some sense, it's not like oh uh, man, I, this is gonna you're be the very last it. resort. You're waiting. To you're waiting it. for it. That's what I'm saying. You're in. You're a. You're tiger and waiting. You're 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 primed. You're always looking for an instance to use that gun. That's why we're you at the have mercy. It. We're at the mercy of that person's discretion. That individual's person's discretion in that moment in time with whatever he is going through in his life. Please don't set him off. He may kill you. Exactly right. That's exactly right. And I mean, here's the other thing. Your guns are offensive weapons. That's the other thing. We talk about it so much in this country. Everyone's like, I need guns to defend myself. They're not shields. You use them first. The person who uses their gun first wins the fight. The person who uses their gun first is the one who says, and that's a gun that people will preach. They'll be like, that's why you got to use your gun first. It's like, yeah, in a lawless society, sure. But in a society where you're not judge, jury, and executioner, you're not the law. You're not running around with a freaking red helmet, uh, you know, shooting up freaking Tennessee, whatever town this is, trying to kill every person that has shoplifted ever from a Walgreens. I mean, like, come on, come off of it. And the fact that the law itself is enabling these people to feel like they're, they're freaking Judge Dredd is just like it's beyond insanity. And the fact that we as a cult- as a culture just take it. I don't know. I I mean, I, not just I, take it, man. We take it. What do you think? We so this take is, it. This is in light of all the, the the Tennessee school shooting that was horrific. What do you think Tennessee is doing about this now? What do you think nothing. the reaction to all this gun violence is? You I'm would sure be wrong. You, you would be wrong if you said nothing. Republican lawmakers are moving to further protect gun and ammunition dealers, manufacturers, and sellers against lawsuits. Cool. That's right. Okay. Republicans who said. And you could go look at the video of this, which is insane, where they were like, they, they, they were posed the question, well, what are you going to do about this? 
and paraphrasing by but not by much they're like there's nothing we can do about this there's nothing more we can do about this gun violence it's out of our hands it will be they did do something they are oh. <laughs> shielding gun firms they are shielding gun firms but they will not shield citizens from gun violence at the gotta very shield least, my donors at the very least the timing is insensitive at the very least <laughs> They, it is, well, it is a know. bad time. It's a bad time to is it, shield. Is it those. because they know that they know what's coming? They got to shield their donors. It's you're, you're 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 shielding you're shielding your dealer. You're shielding the the trough that feeds you. You're shielding the teat that you nestle from. That you 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 get your nectar. Your sweet sweet ammunition nectar. Your sweet unpasteurized milk. I just can't with this anymore. It's it's and it, here's the thing. It's. You know, I don't want to get into despair. It just feels like we're in a, it feels like we're in a despair spiral. It feels like the, well, then, the people have lost this. and there's just going to be more and more guns because the more shootings we have, the more people make more, make it easier to acquire our firearms. And it's sort of like we're, I mean, this is be a shooting every, I mean, there's our probably in this country a shooting every second, but literally it's just going to be again, like. Yeah, the, the right you said as a reason. Look how dangerous it is. Wow, there is a shooting every second. It's dangerous. Buy more guns. Yeah, that's that's exactly. It's a, it's a self fulfilling prophecy, and they're just in the win of it. They they're they're on the right side of this argument because a corporations rule this country, and corporations profit from more guns being sold. And uh, there's not really much you can do about it. We need another corporation. We need a Disney basically to go head to head with. <laughs> gun manufacturers in order to if you want this to be solved you need to find a big corporation who doesn't like guns that's basically is, how you're gonna solve is, it. can Iger just be rented out by different groups different activist groups you got it yeah um, that's, that's the only way to go about it because you're definitely so politicians are bought and paid for they're never going to help you what's crazy to me right when you look at the gun violence statistics and you think about there's a 12 kids die every day, 32 were injured every day from gunshots. That's just kids. The gun violence stats are just like hard for me yeah. to comprehend. But when you when you when you hear about gun violence, right? Those are stats. When you hear about gun violence, there's the one school shooting or this these two women, one was pregnant getting shot. The 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 stories are just nowhere near as uh uh as many as 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 this as the, that match the stats. So we're often not aware of everything that's happening across this country. We get these minimum, these these minor glimpses, and yeah. I mean, it's just that's not even fair to, to just focus on these single things that happen, even though they're probably very representative of some of the carnage that so many more people face. But there's so much more out there, and so many of these things go unreported. And I don't know when you start to. Think about that woman who's seven months pregnant, falling on hard times after shoplift from a Walmart, right? Yeah. That's what situation she's in, or Walgreens, and that's what situation she's in, or a school shooting, or really any victim of gun violence. And you just amplify that by the stats. And you think about all those individual victims, but also their social networks, anyone who may be impacted by the loss or the injury that they suffered. You know, what can we do to stop this? Like, what is the first? Not what we, can we do to stop this? That's a loaded question. But what is the first meaningful step? Like, what is something that can be done that is like, all right, the gun violence ain't going to stop from that, but that is a step in the right direction? I mean, you need something for Jesus. I mean, yeah. <laughs> you, you, need, you need like that, that like the campaign, the little that bit of legislation you came up with a minute ago. You need a side angle if you're going to, if you're ever going to. So every gun has a sticker on it. And it's the stat of how many people that it, 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 this gun will kill X amount of people. <laughs> X amount of lifetime. children. X yeah. amount of children. That's basically what. You, yeah, that's not going to do it. Um, nothing's going to do it. It's. It's. I mean, I think it's an illness personally, and uh, and I'm not afraid to call that out. I think that it. I think that it. There is some sort of mental, um, sort of malaise with when it comes to weaponry and uh and the thrill of having them and uh and and wanting to use them i th i do think there is a some sort of can I use pathology there something like that is that is that accurate you're the medical person <laughs> i mean i i wouldn't doubt that there is some type of 
That's why we can't intoxic- study it. That's why, that's some why ty- I feel Some type of intoxicating it. nature to it. I mean, you'll often hear it with animals. Once they have a taste for man blood, yeah. um, they'll yeah. kill again. Yeah. Right? I mean, it, like there's got to be something to it where you, ex- you, whether you have exercised it or not, have the potential to exert dominance over someone else. Human right. history is filled with scenarios like that, right. whether it was slavery or something else. Right. Our sports, just like it's in our nature. So to give someone ultimate authority over you, with a with a weapon of war, with a deadly weapon. I mean, if you're into that, if that's where you get your kicks or that's how you're conditioned, I don't know if it's innate or not. But yeah, I can imagine it is preying on you, whether you know it or not. Yeah. That it's just, I don't. It yeah, I I, I can't imagine. I don't know. Like it, it's almost like the trading places thing, right? Uh, can you be conditioned to think that way and enjoy it? I don't know. Maybe. Because clearly it happens to a significant portion of the population. Am I just to believe they're all predisposed to that? No, it's got to be so much conditioning. Yeah. Um, so much nurture over nature. And I think we're just nurturing ourselves to be this. I don't think this is how we really are. Oh, to accept it. Because all those animals that behave that way, in the same books that I've read about it, it's because they went through some type of trauma. And yeah. animals don't have shrinks. <laughs> there's, no way, there's no way for them to get over that trauma. So they act out violently and we're no different, except there's nothing to help except these that. people. I like that. Yeah. I like that. I think that's spot on. So. Well, that's it folks. That's I all. know <laughs> you keep doing this. You keep ending on a downer. <laughs> it's like, really? Gun violence. That's how you want to close this out. That's it's what you serious, want to walk you know? away from the pod with. It's like, yeah, I oh, do well, actually. I, I, I do want to do it's gun violence. And uh, no. yeah, here's just another, another place. And, Convince one person in your life, get one person in your life to agree with you that something needs to be done. And that's maybe what we can do. Most people who live in cities who could see how terrible it would be if every single person you pass down the street is carrying weapons of war, carrying something that they could just discharge and kill children, children children in some of these states. They get without the, without a parent present can carry open carry in yeah, public. They, it's they, just they get it. They get it. But you know, it's 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 because this country is made up of various regions and various cultures across those regions. I mean, it's it's I get look, I get it. If you're out there, you're listening to this podcast, you go hunting and fishing and you you live in an, in a town of like 200 people over I, I'm really bad with square miles, but uh Something really large where you literally could discharge your weapon on your property for fun without having any fear of killing somebody. You're going to feel about guns very differently than someone who doesn't. And the idea to think, well, then they should trade with me. They should live in they should live in these areas in order to enjoy the guns in the way that I do. I mean, sure. Switch places. Enjoy the guns in an urban environment. Yeah. Enjoy them. Enjoy them. Yeah. And well, you know, people are again, it's it's we're not empathetic which is another reason why we have this sickness uh it's our lack of empathy to understand how this affects people that do not live the lives you live and many more people the population centers aren't in what you just described like so yes you who have been given a fair shake regionally because of the electoral college are impacting many more people than your immediate community and they because of the freedom that you like yeah. It's killing everyone else, and they would say, "Take that up with with the system." They, they, that's why America America was built just for this situation. And no, um, that's that's like a complete bastardization of the second. Hey, well, I mean, again, I by the by the NRA when yeah. they were taken over by the fringe group. I will repeat this at the revolt of Cincinnati. <laughs> like gotcha. there you go. Gotcha. It wasn't a thing before that. So gotcha. they're indoctrinated, whether they want to believe it or not. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There you go. Anyway, all right, all right. Well. Where where can they find us? <laughs> you know what we're about now. So there's no going back. Folks, 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 we have new content every week. Like and subscribe to us on YouTube, Twitter, and wherever you listen to your podcasts. And with that, we bid you retraction. Oh.